Welcome to SAH News. This is Johanna T. Wold speaking. And with her Ani. And today we're going to be talking about South American history. So, first let's get started on Napoleon's involvement. You might be thinking, what does Napoleon have to do with this? Well, the truth is, before Spain and Portugal, what well, kind of Portugal, decided to come and go to South America to invade, um, Napoleon went, um, moved into Spain and Portugal in eight. 1808, okay? And he basically held captive the, ca captive the king of Spain and told, ordered him to order his people to go into to go into South America. So it was kind of his fault. And I would have thought he would have gone over his, you know, like, um, Napoleon, I rule everything, I have all this power face. But no, he didn't. It was actually kind of surprising, too. And I also thought, like, like, hmm. He has nothing to do with this. Like, first, okay, I understand, like, you, uh, you had a bunch of France and everything. Doesn't mean, like, but he's trying to, I feel like he's trying to rule the entire world. How does he relate to the American, the revolution? Um, well, he, like I said, he was the one who sent the Spaniards mm. to South America. Okay. So, if he didn't do that, kind of, kind of wouldn't have all these revolutions. We might have, but I don't think so. So, this was kind of the reason why Napoleon had to do with everything. And so after this, after this commercial, we are, are going, going to, to be talking about the, the Brazilian independence. Are you an unsufferable git? Well, so was Napoleon. Well, this is how you solve it with I'm Napoleonizer 2.0, the people of a unicorn bubble bath. If your name is Jacob Malfoy or Napoleon, you are stuck to get you. No one wants to get, always get. If you die, internal bleeding easily bruises you not to us. Bye! Eat so separately! Ding! Thank you for that wonderful commercial. And remember to make sure to buy on Napoleon Island 2.0, the Punk Fluffy Uniform Bubble Bath. Now we're going to be talking about the Brazilian independence. So, did you know Brazil wanted independence from Portugal? The prince himself, Prince Pedro, was the ruler of Brazil and he actually helped free Brazil. Hi, Harani. The political and military events occurred in 1821 to 1824. And why did this happen? It's like, can you tell me why Brazil wanted, like, independence? Harani, to answer your question, I will answer it right now. They weren't being treated fairly. So, like, all the other people with the Spaniards? Yes. That's quite interesting. This is crazy, but the Independence Day of Brazil was officially announced on September 7th, 1822 from the hands of Portuguese. Some of the birthday probably would be on that day. The French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars deeply affected Brazil. How did they affect the wars deeply? Well, Harani, you have to keep on listening because your question will be answered right now. But let me just start reading. <laughs> then comes the Brazilian War, blocking the road from 1975 to 1987. War begins, millions die, and millions wounded, maybe even more. And that's how the Brazilian independence was founded. So, you're probably thinking, what about the Revo Brazilian Revolution? Well, it's your lucky day. You can learn that right now, so keep on listening if you want to learn more. On September 20th, of the same year the Liberal Alliance began launching their Canadians, candidates for the presidential elections, which was Getulio Vargas as Canadian for president and Jaya for short. His full name is very long, and he was a candidate for vice president. The Brazilian independence happened in 1930, in the mouth of, of October. Now we'll talk about Jose de San Martin after this quick commercial break. Do you want to go to South America? Duh! Well, it's your lucky day, because if you win this sweepstakes, you will get a ticket to go on a cruise to South America. No way! 
yes way. In fact, one in a million people get it. You're going to be so lucky, and it's so easy to get. Do you have to do anything? Well, of course. You're going to have to pay $2 million. Okay. You get to get you get to visit Jose de San Martin's grave and also San Bovar's. That's sad, but exciting. I know. Each all separately. Remember, one in a million people who have played a thousand dollars. Thank you. Bye. Ding. Jose de San Martin, known as the protector of Peru. He started in the 20th July in 1821 and he ended his kind of reign in, on the 20th of September of 1822. He, he was also a great revolutionary leader and he got most of the stuff when he worked in Europe as a military. To prove this fact, he was raised uh, to a sub-lieutenant in 1793. He was simply 15 years old. He was also part of the Navy at the time of the French Revolution. Now that we know some of his history, we can start on what his impact on the South American Revolution. More specifically, the freedom of Peru. In the battle where they fought to have Peru's freedom, Peru's forces nearly had four times the strength of D J Jose de San Martin's. They had nearly 23,000 soldiers in total. But Jose de San Martin only had near around 4,000 soldiers. So we already see that the portions and ratios are kind of not that fair. Because of this, Mar de San Martin tried to avoid battles while, while crossing the Andes. When de San Martin was coming to free Peru, he first, what he did was isolate Lima from the surrounding countryside. If you do not know, Lima is the capital of Peru. San, San Martin uh, isolated Lima by coming from two different directions. So that was pretty smart. If they tried to flee, they would be blocked by his army in the other direction. After this, most of the population of Peru supported D. San Martin. And after that, they defeated they defeated the royalists at the battle of pasco but sometimes things don't always go as planned the natives that had joined the arenales could not resist the royal's counter attack jose de san martin now that we know his early life we should talk about his afterlife and by afterlife we mean everything that's happened after the wars like did he settle in what happened San Martin had a good relationship with the federal Caldulos. After the war, he was also in a feud, though, with the Ukrainian leader. Not wanting to cause another war, he tried to stay in the middle. That didn't work out so well as he planned. Despite all these feuds, he was elected, well, kind of raised up, to the president of Argentina. San Martin also offered his military in the wars of Brazil. This was usual because again he offered his military, but this time to the Rosas. Thank you for tuning in to SAH. Hope you can come back another time. Bye. You better leave now before we get our revolutionary skills and to kick you out like we did with the Spaniards.